Hey everybody, uh, welcome to my first touch designer tutorial. Today we're going to be uh, making a little pixel art drawing pad that converts things over to voxels in real time. Uh, so the other week I'd made a post about uh, this little thing that I was working on um, and I said if there was interest I would do a tutorial and there was, so I am. Um, and the day before making this I had uh, made this thing um, and I went about it in kind of a tedious way where I, uh, I put down a grid and then I selected the points that I wanted to keep. I deleted all the others, so then I ended up with this heart and then did some instancing. So I ended up with this uh, heart made of boxes. And um, uh, naturally this kind of approach is <laughs> limited in its application as it's super tedious. If you wanted to you know, easily be able to make some, some voxel art, uh, it'd be much nicer to just be able to draw this. So that's how I got started on this thing. And right now it's uh, still pretty bare bones. We're not going to build out this entire thing with all these widgets. Uh, we're just going to build the uh, basic system here today. Uh, but then we, uh, we will talk a little bit about how you might think about expanding it, because I think there are um, a lot of ways that uh, you could uh, do some cool stuff with this. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm just going to close that. I'm going to keep this in the background just to reference later, and let's start up a uh, fresh, empty touch designer project. I'll pause that in the background as well. Cool. So we have a uh, an empty touch designer project here. First thing I'm going to do is close the palette because we don't need that. And let's go to our comps, drop down a container. Uh, so I will say this will assume some basic uh, touch designer knowledge, but nothing too crazy. Um, no, no GLSL, no Python, except for the odd expression here and there. Cool. So we've dropped down our container. This is going to end up being our drawing pad. So we're just going to call this draw. And then we're going to do one other thing here on this top level, and we're going to drop down a constant chop, and we're going to send that to a null. You can do that really easily by uh, hitting Alt-N on your keyboard. If you have something highlighted, it'll send that to a null. Cool. So this is where we're going to set the resolution for um, our drawing panel as well as our pixel canvas. Um, and I'm doing these two things separately just because it's uh, our pixel canvas is going to be a little small and it's nice to be able to easily set the resolution of our scaled canvas separately. Um, and we're also doing it here because, uh, you know, our resolution is going to be referenced in a number of places in this network and uh, it's, it's just <laughs> highly preferable to be able to change it in one place rather than need to uh, change it in a million different places or have something break if we want to change it in one place. Cool. So. Uh, on our constant here, we're going to make two channels. We're going to call the first one pixel underscore res, and we're going to call the second one panel underscore res. For right now, I'm going to say pixel res is 25, and panel res is 1000. Uh, I will keep all resolutions here uh, at the, uh, the free uh, limit, which I think is 1280 by 720, or 1280 by 1280. So we'll uh, stick to that. So um, yeah, let's uh, rename this null, we'll call it resolution. And now let's go to our uh, container here and on the layout tab for width and height, that's where we wanna set our uh, panel res. So let's make this viewer active. We can do that by hitting the A key. And then let's drag panel res over here to width as a chop reference and to height as well. Cool. So now we have a uh, 1000 by 1000 panel right here, and we have this way to set our resolution. So this is uh, all that we're going to do on the top level for right now. But uh, before moving forward, what I'm going to do is right click on our resolution null right here and hit view. I'm going to make it a little smaller and just drag it off to the side here. This is just something I like to do if I have some chop data that's going to be referenced a lot uh, while I'm moving forward. So uh, I just like to set that aside so we can easily drag and drop that to uh, different parameters as we move ahead. And I'm actually going to do the exact same thing with this draw window. I'm going to right click and hit view. It's going to open that up. I'm going to scale it down and just leave it off to the side. Uh, you could also, you know, split the network and do stuff like that. Uh, I just typically like floating windows so I can move them around easily. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, go inside of our draw container. So the very first thing we're going to want to do is create uh, our individual single pixel that we're going to be drawing with. And we're going to do that by going to our tops and drop down a rectangle. So before doing anything uh, with this rectangle, there are a number of things we have to keep in mind while working with pixel art. Uh, there are a few things we need to avoid. We need to avoid aliasing and interpolation. Otherwise, we're going to end up with some blurry 
stuff and we want to work with individual pixels here so let's go over here and where it says size and center uh, rather than working with a zero to one fraction aspect we want to work with individual pixels so let's just change that to pixels and we'll do the same thing for uh, center here just change that to pixels down here where it says anti-alias we want to make sure we turn that off and then in the common tab down here this is something we're going to want to do for every top within this container. We want to change input smoothness to nearest pixel and viewer smoothness to nearest pixel as well. And this is just going to help us avoid any sort of interpolation. Awesome. And then up here for resolution, this is where we can go ahead and set our pixel res. So let's go over here to our floating chop. Let's drag pixel res right onto the word resolution and then say chop reference. So that's going to set both the width and the height to the, um, the output of our pixel res here, which is 25. So now we have a 25 by 25 grid of pixels. And it's all white right now because our rectangle is huge. It's bigger than our canvas. It's 128 by 128. So let's just change both of these to one. Awesome. So now we have a single individual pixel in the middle of a grid of 25 by 25 pixels. Perfect. So let's make sure that we can see what we're doing here on our panel. That's the next thing we're going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and send that rectangle to a null. And I'm going to send that null to an out. I tend to use a lot of nulls. <laughs> you, you don't have to. Uh, just a kind of force of habit. Um, but anyway, so now we've got our rectangle eventually ending up going uh, to this out. So let's go up one level. And back here on our uh, container, let's go to the look tab. And we're going to type under the uh, background top parameter, period forward slash out one. So now our panel is looking at our, uh, our little pixel here. And it's scaling it to 1000 by 1000, or you know whatever we're scaling our window to. Cool. So let's go back in here. Now the next thing we want to do is we need a way to actually move this thing around with our mouse because we want to be drawing. And the way we're going to do that is by dropping down a panel chop. Super useful. This thing is going to give us a bunch of ways that we can interact with this panel. So as you see, if I, if I move my mouse over it here, we get the uh, X and Y value of our mouse. We also get left clicks, right clicks, and a ton of other useful stuff. So. Uh, for this, uh, for this tutorial, I'm only uh, going to be grabbing a few things. So we can actually just select the ones that we want right up here in the panel chop. Um, but just in case we want to come back later and maybe add something with some of these other parameters, I'm going to instead send this panel to a select chop. And then up here, we can just type in the parameters that we want. And in this case, we just want left click, right click. We want the X value of our mouse and the Y value of our mouse. So that will be L select, R select, inside U and inside V. And then it'll just uh, get rid of all those extra parameters that we're not using. So now we can see we have inside U and inside V here. We also have L select and R select. And we can also uh, simplify this a bit for ease of reference. And um, right here in the rename to field, I'm just gonna say uh, X, Y, L, whoop, no. L, R, X, Y. So now when we click left mouse, L, R, X, and Y. Awesome. So I'm going to do the same thing that I did down here and just extend all of this to a null. I'm going to move this up a little bit. Cool. So now let's rename this null mouse underscore data. Let's make this active. And let's go to our rectangle again. So here, what we want to do is change the center of our pixel right here to the X and Y value of our mouse. So let's drag X to center X as a chop reference and Y to center Y as a chop reference. And we're definitely moving the pixel now, but we're, we're not moving it very much. So what's happening is that uh, the panel chop by default interprets uh, our uh, mouse position as going from zero to one 
um, on the both the x and the y axis from uh, the very left to the very right and from the very bottom to the very top. But we need this to go for the uh, the pixel, the length of pixels that our uh, canvas is, which is uh, right now it's 25. So we just need to do some simple math. So let's grab another select here, drop that down. Let's send select one into select two. And we're just gonna select X and Y here. So type X space Y under channel names. So now we just have X and Y selected. And then we're gonna send those two into a math chop. And then on this math chop, we wanna go to the range tab and we have a from range and a to range. So basically we just need to change one parameter. We wanna say, instead of going from zero to one, we wanna go from zero to however big our canvas is, which is pixel res up here. So let's drag pixel res over here to the max range as a chop reference. So now if we look here on this math one chop, as we move our mouse around, we're now going from zero all the way up to 25. Cool, so now we just need to get that back into our uh, mouse data null up here, and we're gonna do that with a merge. So you can right click right here on this uh, node connection and hit insert operator, type merge and drop that down. Then uh, here on this uh, main tab, under duplicate names, we're gonna change that to replace first with last. So now what we can do is just take this math, send it into the merge, and that will replace the uh, uh, X and Y values that were here before, which were going from zero to one, and replace it with ones that are going from zero to 25. So now we're definitely moving one to one with our mouse, but it looks like we're offset. So what's happening is that, um, again, this panel thinks that zero is down here at the bottom left. But zero, uh, for us, we want to be right here in the center. So again, we just need to do some more simple math. And we're gonna do that just with a, a very basic Python expression. So over here on our uh, rectangle uh, top, let's go to the common tab and under resolution, this is uh, my way of cheating and not typing a whole lot. Uh, let's just copy this, get this on the clipboard. This is referencing our pixel res. So let's go back to our rectangle. Uh, the main tab. So let's think about this. We're offset by half of our canvas. So we need to basically always be subtracting uh, half of the length of our canvas. So that way zero, instead of ending up down here in the bottom left, is ending up here in the center. So we're gonna do that by, let's drop down our uh, center parameters here. And here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna say the uh, value for X, instead of just being the value for X, it's actually going to be, remember we have our pixel res on the clipboard. So we're gonna say mouse data for X minus, then paste our pixel resolution divided by two or times 0 0.5, whatever makes more sense in your head. Then hit enter and we're gonna do the exact same thing down here. So minus paste our pixel resolution divided by two. So now, Hey, there we go. We have a pixel moving around one-to-one -one with our mouse. So as a brief aside, while we could have left our center parameters set to a fraction and then subtracted uh, half from our zero to one XY mouse values, uh, we're working with individual pixels. So this approach gives us much more precise data to work with, and it makes it much easier for us to reference the exact XY position on the pixel grid. Also, while we could have simply used Python to multiply our XY values by our pixel res, uh, using chops here rather than an expression will let us make some adjustments to how our XY positioning works with additional chops. A little more on that later. So what's the next thing that we need to do? Well, we need to be able to draw with it because right now it's just moving around. And the way that I've been doing that right now is with feedback. So we're gonna grab a feedback top, drop that down, send our rectangle into it. And then back here, we're going to add a composite. So hit insert operator on our little node connection here. Let's type in composite, drop that down. We're gonna change the mode to over. And we're gonna send our feedback into this comp. Then we're going to drag the comp onto our feedback top. And that's just gonna set it as our target. So now as we move our mouse over here, we're definitely drawing, but it looks a little blurry. So remember, 
uh, for all these tops. I'm just gonna select them all. You can do that by right clicking and dragging. We're gonna go back to our common tab and make sure that for all of our tops, we're setting it to nearest pixel for input smoothness and viewer smoothness. There, perfect. So the issue right now is that we're always drawing as we move our mouse. And also, we don't have any way to clear this. So let's do that right now. Let's go back to our, uh, our feedback top here on the feedback uh, tab. And then next to reset, there's a pulse button. And what we're gonna do is drag our right click to the pulse button as a chop reference. So now when we right click on our panel, we can delete everything. Awesome. Draw, 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 delete. So the next issue that we need to solve is that we're always drawing. We don't have a way to turn this off and on. And the way we're gonna do that is just by changing the rectangles fill alpha with our mouse button. So let's just go over here and we're going to drag L for our left click on the panel onto fill alpha as a chop reference. Let's right click here to clear it. And now you'll see that we don't have a pixel and when we click, we do, and it stays there. So now we're making amazing pixel art. And there's one other quality of life thing that we wanna do here, which is I wanna be able to see where this pixel is gonna get dropped down. So let's do this. Let's move this down a little bit and let's just copy and paste this rectangle. And then on this rectangle two, let's change our fill alpha to 0 0.5. So this is always going to be at half opacity. And then over here, let's just right click, insert operator. We're just gonna drop down another composite and we're going to change the operation mode to over on this one as well. And then let's feed our rectangle into that composite. Then let's also make sure we change this to nearest pixel. Cool, so now we have a little ghost pixel, kind of a little guide that will follow our mouse, our, mouse, our mouse around wherever we move it so we know exactly where our pixel is going to be placed. Perfect. What else? Well, it would be nice to be able to change color. So because uh, Touch Designer has a bunch of uh, nice little built-in widgets, let's use one of those. So let's uh, click this button up here to open the palette. Let's go down to UI. Let's go down to basic widgets. Scroll down a little bit and let's grab this slider for RGBA. So you'll see that it already just auto populated in our panel here down in the bottom left. For now, we're just gonna leave it like that. That's all we need. Uh, we can make this a more complicated thing later if we'd like, but for now, this is perfect. So it's not doing anything right now. We just need to assign these sliders to something. So we're gonna do that by sending this to a null. And we're gonna call this null color underscore widget. Let's make that viewer active. Then let's open up the parameters for our rectangle. Actually, let's do this for both rectangle one and two. So you can control click to select them both, change these parameters on both of them at the same time. So let's drag R to the fill color R and then the same for G and B. And we're gonna do that as a chop reference. So red green, blue. And alpha, I'm not gonna use right now. So now if I make this a little bit bigger here, we'll see that we have our white. And if I change this slider, we can see where we're at on our swatch as well as our uh, guide pixel here. And we can change the color that we're drawing with. Fantastic. This character is ready for uh, for Undertale. <laughs> All right, perfect. Let's add a little red here just to have. Cool. Let's scale that back down. All right, so that's pretty much it here for this section of the network. We have our very basic little drawing pad. So now let's go out one level. And right here, Coming out of our output, let's just right click here. Let's drop down another null and let's call this null drawing underscore output. Cool. 
So now the next thing that we're gonna need to do is convert this into voxels. We just need to think about how are we gonna get this thing to exist in 3D space. So let's do all of that in another container just cause I'm a big fan of trying to keep things nice and tidy. So drop down another container. Let's call this uh, Pix2Vox. You can call it whatever you'd like. There are a couple ways to get this into our container. Um, we can use a select. We can use an in. I'm just going to use an in for now. So let's drop down an in top. Let's go back out. And then we can just feed this right into our container. And here it is. Cool. So before I do anything else, I'm just going to go ahead and drag that to a null. Awesome. So now we have this in a new container. And this is where we're going to uh, make everything exist in 3D space. And we're going to do that with SOPs. So we need to do a couple different things, but we're gonna start by just dropping down a grid. So this grid is basically going to represent our canvas, but in 3D space. So first thing that we need to do is we need to change rows and columns so it matches our canvas up here, which is 25 by 25, which is referenced from our pixel res. So let's drag pixel res here to rows as a chop reference and columns as a chop reference. So now our grid is 25 by 25. I'm gonna send that to a null as well. And then I'm going to send this to, no, let's actually just leave that for now. And then next we're gonna drop down a box. Now this box is going to represent our individual pixels. This is what we're going to be rendering, this box. And we're gonna, we're gonna uh, do some instancing with it as well. So to start doing that, let's make a uh, basic render network and turn this into a piece of geometry. So I'm gonna send that to a null and then I'm gonna right click and I'm going to send that directly into a piece of geometry, a uh, geometry comp. So you could also just drop down a geometry comp, but then you have to go in there and delete this torus and blah, 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 blah. It's a lot easier if you just right click on a SOP go to the comp and drop down a geometry, it automatically gives you this little uh, in and out and it sets it as geometry. Cool, so now we have that as geometry. Let's make a basic render network, which is light camera action, which is our render. All right, cool. So now we're rendering a single little box. I'm gonna send this render to a null then I'm going to uh, send it to a transform. Then I'm going to send it to an out. And I'm only sending it to this transform because this makes it really easy to, easy to uh, quickly comp over a background color so we're not looking at that uh, transparent grid. So I'm just gonna make this background color very dark blue. And then on our out, I'm gonna hit the display flag. Cool. So now here's a display of our box being rendered. And next we just need to do a little instancing. So we need this box to be replicated for every individual pixel up here. So let's go to our instance tab on our GL1, turn on instancing. And now we need to prep our instancing data. So up here, our grid is going into null one, and then we're gonna send that null one to a SOP to chop. So this is just going to give us our SOP data represented as chop data. And we don't have to do this, but I just, I prefer this because it it makes it a little easier to start playing around with uh, with these raw waveforms and whatnot later on if we want to uh, get experimental with it. So let's uh, send this SOP to a null and let's call this null instance underscore data. So now let's go back to GO1 and we're gonna drag instance data to default instance op. We're gonna change translate X, Y, and Z to TX, TY, and TZ. You can type those in or uh, click the little drop down over here to select those parameters. Cool. So now it looks like we have a giant box, but we actually have 25 by 25 boxes. They're just a little big. So let's go to our box here and under size, let's just make this a bit smaller. It's right around, right around here. It's 0.042. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So let's go to our camera and let's change uh, TZ to 2.3, cool. So now if I make this box a little bit smaller, 
then we can see we have these individual boxes. If I were to rotate the box, then we could see that these are indeed little 3D boxes. We got a bunch of them. Awesome. So I'm going to change this back to 0.042. And now the next thing that we need to do is we need to get um, this drawing onto those boxes. So how are we going to do that? Uh, well, we're going to also turn this into chop data. So on this null, let's right click on the output, go to chop and drop down a top to chop. DJ top to chop. This, this is Dotto Radio. Yo, what's good, everybody? It's your boy DJ Top the Chop coming at you live on Dotto Radio in the morning. You already know what it is. We got Jeremy Caulfield here on the ones and twos. We are announcing today's contest. Everybody get stoked, and we're going to go over the rules right now. Y'all ready? Okay, here's what you got to do. Head to your top, strap down a movie file in. Okay, movie file in. You're going to get this banana, but what you really need is you got to hit up here, open a new file. We're going to pick out count.mov, okay? Count.mov. And here's the situation. This bad boy is going to count up from 1 to 100, okay? 1 to 100. And you know what you got to do? Uh, pause it right on 100, okay? Get this thing paused right on 100. If you can, you're gonna wanna get a screenshot. Take that screenshot and the first person to send it in to the heads of Derivative are, are gonna get 10 free years of a Touch Designer Pro license, okay? That's 10 years free, but you gotta be quick. You gotta send that screenshot in. DJ Top to Chop dot to. Okay, so now on our Top to Chop, under Crop, on the crop tab up here, we need to change the crop from row U to full image. And then we've got just a ton of individual strings of data here. We want to change that to just a few. So we're going to send this into a shuffle. And then on the shuffle, we're going to change the method to sequence channels by name. So now we've got red, green, blue, and alpha values for every pixel here. So now we can easily feed that back into our instance data with a merge. So let's insert a merge here. And then let's send our shuffle into the merge. So now we have RGBA easily available in our instance data chop. So let's go back to our geo. And on the instance tab for scale, this is where, this has just been my approach. So the way that I'm doing this is I'm basically saying if there is no pixel, then the size of the box at that location is zero. So it's just basically not drawing it at all. And then the size of that scales with the opacity of that individual pixel. So right now there's not even opacity that we're using. So when we have a pixel, it'll change the box to a uh, scale of one by one by one. So for both scale X, Y, and Z, we're going to select A, which is our alpha channel. So now we're not making any boxes in those locations unless uh, there's a pixel in that location. And if we go here to our geo, we can look around. You can see that we do have our drawing as 3D now. And then the next thing that we need to do is get color. And that is just about as simple as everything else has been so far. And on the instance two tab, we want to go to where it says color op and just change RGB to R G B. Awesome. We did it. So now we have our uh, drawing, which exists in 3D space. It's a little hard to tell just because we have a static camera. So we could do something like uh, here on our geo. Let's go back to the transform tab and play around with the rotation. Very cool. We could type in a little expression, abs time dot seconds times five. Even make that a little bit faster. So now if I delete this, and as we draw, you'll see that we're building this in real time. Then there are a lot of things that we can start doing here. This can be expanded in a ton of different ways. All right, so I thought now that I would just go over some ways that um, I've tried to expand this into a bit more of a useful tool um, past the uh, totally bare bones thing that we've built. So here are just a few ideas um, if you wanted to actually build this out into uh, something with a bit more complexity. Uh, so over here, I just have some basic stuff for uh, things like changing our, our brush shape, our brush size. So this is just changing the um, the rectangle size. Remember, we had it set on um, 
uh, just one by one by default. So let me just draw something here with a bit bigger of a square. But then the uh, the biggest thing that I've added to mine is the ability to uh, draw on different layers. And this turns it into sort of a pixel stacking tool. So here on layer one, um, I just have this. And if I were to go to layer two, let me change the color a little bit to this blue and draw on top of it, you'll see that down here, that's now on top of layer one. So we're kind of stacking. Uh, so layer five goes on top of four, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Let me draw a little bit more so we can make a little structure here. Let's go back to a size of one here. Awesome, so now we have this little structure. So let's talk about how I'm actually doing that. Um, let me make this a little smaller here. So the way that I'm doing it, if we go back into our draw container, is I basically just set up um, some additional feedback loops. So rather than um, just this single one that we had initially in uh, what we just built, um, I just have four additional ones and then I have these little widgets. These are just little um, on and off buttons. So this will let me toggle on and off the opacity in a level top of um, our drawing input before it gets to any of these feedback loops. So if I don't have any layer selected, if I draw, nothing is getting through. And you'll see here on this level top, our opacity is set to zero. So if I click on layer one here, and now our opacity is set to one, and anything that I draw is going through to layer one. Um, and it's the same thing here with these other feedback loops. If I hit two, then it will open up on layer two. If I did it for every single layer, then it just turns on opacity for every single layer. And we can you know, easily draw on every single layer. So then each of those are coming out individually, and then those are each being fed into uh, clones of um, that container that we had called pix 2 vox So uh, I just called these layer one, two, three, four, and five. And uh, so what's happening in here is it's basically just coming in. It's doing the exact same thing um, with that drawing data, but you know each one is getting their own separate layer. So then that happens. It gets converted to voxels in this geo, and then these geos are each offset by the size of the boxes that are being instanced. So um, that's happening on the uh, z-axis here on our uh, geo comp. So this would be layer one. And then you'll see here layer two is being offset by uh, the size of our box times one. So that's one box on top. And then geo three is the size of the box times two, times three, and times four. And then when all of that gets rendered, it just means that you know each of those layers are offset by the size of one box and they stack on top of each other. So it's a fairly simple it's a fairly simple thing. You just need to uh, you know take the time to <laughs> to build out the separate layers and, and push data around and whatnot. So then the next thing that I've added is uh, just a very simple little shape select here so we can change between boxes or spheres or tubes, et cetera, et cetera. And the way that that's happening is within the uh, container where that's turning into, um, uh, where all that, the uh, picks to vox container, uh, I just have a switch before our shape goes into our geometry so that we can change between a few different SOPs here. So this drop down is just uh, changing the, uh, switch select input right here. So if I were to go to circle, then it'll select five, which is this circle down here. So what else is on here? Just a little way to type in our canvas size. Um, so the next thing that we can think about doing, which uh, really expands uh, the ways that you could play with this, is playing around with uh, how, this, um, how this instance data is being laid out in our render. So remember I just said I preferred using chop data. Um, so that's what I'm doing here uh, after this grid gets turned into chop data. Um, I have a few different ways for us to play around with how that how all these boxes are actually being placed in our render. So we can do something like 
uh, take a few selects and grab TX, TY, and TZ all separately from our grid. And then we can start introducing things like data from a noise chop or a pattern chop. So for instance, whoop, uh, if, I, if I'm sending TX through a pattern chop, uh, right now I have this set to a sine wave. I have a very simple expression here just so this uh, will constantly uh, keep, keep uh, changing in phase. And then if I dial up the amplitude, this is being added onto our base TX value. And now we're adding a sine wave to the placement of all of this on the X axis. So you can start getting really creative with this. And then just like uh, we can add that data, uh, add to that data with patterns, we can add some noise. So right here, I'm just using a math. I'm combining chops uh, with the add method. So then I have our noise down here. Um, I just have you know that same expression here on translate on TZ. So it's constantly uh, changing our noise a little bit. So then if I dial up the amplitude on our noise, then we can add some noise to the placement on the x-axis. We can do that for all of these, for uh, TX, TY, and TZ as well. So if I were to add some noise on TZ, then, you know, we're going to go add some noise on the z-axis. You know, you might think about having some sort of structure that you've drawn and having just this big abstract <laughs> bunch of boxes and then you can slowly dial out you know noise and have it form your shape or your structure you could add something like a ramp rather than a sine wave and if we change number of cycles and we can get some more add some noise on ty you know you can start getting really creative with how these blocks are being placed in space let me dial all these back out. And now one other thing that we can think about doing is um, importing external pixel art. I'm going to bypass those just because they uh, slowed our frame rate down a little bit. So let's go back out here. And you know, you would, you'd you'd need to set this up in a better way for the UI. Um, so I don't have a, I don't have that chop data manipulation in the UI at all right now. Let's go back into our draw thing here. And here I just have a little sprite from uh, Mega Man X. Oh, let me change this over to nearest pixel. And let's feed that into layer one out. So I'm just replacing layer one right now. Let me right click and clear that. You'll need to make sure that your canvas size is the same as your imported pixel art. So this is 35 by 35. So I just have my canvas set to 35. And then you'll see that uh, in our render, uh, looks like our boxes are a little too big here. Let me make those a bit smaller so we're not getting that overlap. So now we have our, uh, you know, imported pixel art. You could do stuff like, you know, draw on top of it. could change the shapes. <laughs> this is like perler art, isn't it? Make those tubes a little smaller. And, you know, this gets really fun playing with uh, playing with the placement as well. So let's go back into here again. I'm just going to add that sine wave here <laughs> to our sprite. So now X is getting real wiggly. We can add that ramp on TZ again. So I also have something on here called brush spacing. Um, so by default, uh, either zero or one will just mean it's, it's skipping a single pixel and then snapping right there. Um, but if we up this to two, then it's only going to place a pixel every two spaces on the grid. Etc. Etc. So you can start making some uh, interesting patterns in that way. That also will let you uh, snap a little easier if you're changing the brush size. So now we can easily snap with a, a size of four. 
And then the way that I'm doing that is pretty simple. Uh, if we go back inside of our draw container here, um, I just have this uh, limit chop here on the, uh, the little chain that has our mouse X and Y values. And the, uh, the little field here where you can type in brush spacing is inserting a value step right here on the quantize tab of that limit and the quantize value mode is set to round. So that just means that these numbers for our X and Y values are going to be rounded to uh, the nearest multiple of um, you know whatever number we're putting in here. So if I put in one for our brush spacing, you can see that our X and Y values are jumping by one. But if I were to put in five, then now it's only grabbing multiples of five. All right, so let's talk a little bit about um, uh, opacity on the brush because I didn't I didn't do that on the uh, tutorial and I'm not gonna go redo it uh, but uh yeah so I do have um, this alpha slider here active so we can dial out the alpha and then draw without full opacity here um, so you can see down here remember opacity is linked to the size of each of our instanced boxes so that means that we can um, you know draw with different sizes on different layers um, and create some more interesting structures and the way that I've got this uh, working right now is over here uh, on our mouse data chain I've selected the left mouse button and I am multiplying that um, data so rather than going from 0 to 1 and automatically putting fill alpha to 1 every single time it's instead being multiplied by the uh, output of that alpha slider so as I change the alpha slider here, um, the, um, the uh, range, sorry, I'm not multiplying, I'm changing the range from 0 to 1 to 0 to whatever the alpha slider is here. So then that just means whenever you click, rather than filling out that rectangle with a value of uh, 1, it's filling it out with a value of whatever the slider is. And then there's one other thing I'm doing with alpha here, which is this thing that I called brush trail. So when I dial this out, you'll see that everything starts to kind of fade. And I thought this was uh, interesting to do just because um, the way that things are linked to size. So you can see here, as I draw, as it slowly fades out, the boxes slowly get smaller and smaller. Let me up that a little bit. So, you know, if you were to draw or, you know, do something live with this setup, uh, that's a pretty, uh, pretty interesting effect. And the way I'm doing that is I just have a level top in the middle of a... Oh, a level top in the middle of that feedback chain that we draw with. So that'll obviously fade out <laughs> whatever you're drawing, but uh, that's just how this is set up right now. So then we could also think about doing some other stuff with those uh, feedback loops for our uh, drawing layers. So if I were to put a transform in the middle of here, then we can start doing some stuff to the data on this layer. So let me draw something with a few different colors here. Let's set, uh, make sure our transform is set to pixels, and we can do something like say, uh, you know, go down one pixel. So now every time you draw, it's gonna go downward. But then you can also go here to this tile tab, and instead of hold or uh, zero, which I think is the default, you can set it to uh, repeat. So now if you drop one pixel, it'll drop down and then continuously repeat over and over. Then maybe you want to do the same thing on a different layer, but then instead say, you know, go to the left by one pixel each time. So let's go to layer two. Let's make this one red. Do the same on layer three. Set this one to mirror. And let's go up. Make this one yellow. So now we've got this kind of <laughs> crazy voxel super highway thing going on. Or you could also play around with, uh, instead of going downward, let's set that back to zero and let's play with uh, rotation a little bit. So let me draw something on layer one. Let me increase the rotation. And then at a certain point, it's going to start grabbing those outside pixels and <laughs> pushing them around in a circle. 
So you can like add things to this little pixel whirlpool here. And if you do have a bunch of layers, then you know you can have these individual manipulations all happening uh, in different ways on different layers. It's getting a little crazy. Then maybe you even think, maybe I don't even want to work with this pixel canvas. I just want to turn some other top data into voxels. Well, that's obviously just as, as easy as uh, replacing your drawing layers. So why don't we try putting in some noise at, um, at our pixel resolution. I'm just going to type this in for now. Let's set it to nearest pixel. Let's dial out our offset. And before we replace our layer with this noise, let's send it through a threshold just to uh, get rid of that black so we only have white ones showing through. Let's set both these to nearest pixel and let's send that into our layer one. So that already looks pretty cool. Let's go to our noise on our transform. Let's type in abs time dot seconds times 0.1 for translate Z so we can get our noise kind of bubbling a little bit. Why don't we try changing this to spheres? And let's uh, add a little more amplitude. So thanks for checking this out. I uh, hope you enjoyed and maybe learned something new. Uh, it took us pretty slow to try and keep it pretty beginner friendly, but if you've got any thoughts on the pacing, I'd love to hear it in case I do more of these in the future. Uh, as with most stuff in Touch Designer, there are a million ways to solve a problem, so my approach may not have always been the most efficient. So I'm always happy to get uh, feedback or hear about ways you may have done something differently or something you're thinking about adding onto it. So uh, feel free to uh, leave questions and comments here on the video or uh, reach out directly as well. Uh, credit is always appreciated if you do build the system and then post something with it. And uh, you know, most of all, I just really would love to see what you make with this if you do recreate it and or uh, add onto it. So uh, you can tag me or just share it with me on Instagram where I'm at Glykes. Uh, you can also find me and most of what I do over at glykes.net. Uh, thanks again for checking this out and I'll catch you here with the next one. Take care everyone.